Lady Shador Minow did not have to die. It was senseless. She was 29 years old. When Laura Boosie, the defendant, intentionally shot and killed her in her own bed. I want to thank you for your patience during your lunch. It's not the most exciting part of it. It's long. This took three days. Some of you may have been here for the entire three days. But it's important. The jury selection up there probably more important than voting. It's what makes our system work. And just a few moments ago, the judge had you swore. You swore an oath. An oath don't hold the law. It's not every day that you're hand selected, but counsel and I, and this Lord, we hand selected you because we knew that you would be fair and impartial. Not only fair to the defendant, but also fair to the state when you're hearing all the evidence. And over the next couple of weeks, you're going to hear a lot of testimony. And you're going to see a lot more physical evidence to support the state's case. And at the end of the case, as you just heard Your Honor say, we're going to be asking you to find the defendant guilty of possession of a weapon for an unlawful purpose, tampering with physical evidence, and murder. So what is murder? At the end of the case, the judge is going to define, he's going to go through what we talked about before, elements. And the state has to prove all the elements of all those offenses beyond a reasonable doubt. I'm sure all of you recall going through that. So the elements of murder, what would we have the state have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt? That Laura Blusey caused Felicia Dorman's death or serious bodily injury that then resulted in her death, and she did so purposely and not. The judge is also going to go over reasonable doubt. And at the end of the trial, I will go through a lot more on what reasonable doubt means. And the judge will too, and I'm sure Ms. Lord may as well. It's what leaves you firmly convinced, reasonable doubt, firmly convinced that this happened, that it happened the way that the state's presenting the evidence. The evidence and testimony in this case will leave you firmly convinced that the defendant intentionally shot and killed the defendant. So let's talk a little bit about what you're going to hear in the case. On August 6, 2017, Jason Lucy went to the Mount Holly Police Department to report a personal matter. In response to that, the officers went to 104 Mill Street for a wellness check. They wanted to see what was going on there. They knock. No answer. They knock. No answer. They knock. No answer. They were there for about five or seven minutes before the defendant finally comes outside. When she does, they notice blood on her arm, and they immediately enter the house, start to clear through the house. They go up to the third floor, and they find Felicia Dormans, her body. She's laying dead on top of a blue tarp with what the officers noticed right away to be a bullet wound right under her eye, right in her face. They look on the bed underneath the covers, and they find a 9 millimeter handgun. Springfield handgun. That's the weapon the defendant used to shoot her wife. What else did officers find? They find gloves. They find blue tarps still in the packaging. They find towels still in the packaging. They find tape. They find a knife. Officers then go to look around the property. And they go in the backyard and they find an area that's basically hidden by blue tarps. They take a peek in there. They see the beginning of a grave. It's not deep, you know, it's not six feet deep, but they definitely see the beginning of a grave. Two shovels right next to it. A spaded shovel and a flat shovel. Did the defendant call 911 or call for help after she shot her wife? No. Instead, she took her wife's body, put it on a blue tarp, and went out back to dig a grave. A lot of this information is confirmed by a statement that you're going to hear that the defendant gave to the police. What did she say? This is a few hours after. It was the gun's fault. It was an accident. I was loading the gun. I happened to be pointing it 
at Felicia's face. You're going to see if she gives a little demonstration, and it just went off. Shock. It was an accident. And I know you will listen to her statement closely, and you're going to hear all the inconsistencies in her statement. I never really shot a gun, but oh, a couple weeks ago I was shooting a gun and I've been to a range. I never drink. Well, sometimes I do drink beer. She goes on and on to so how much she loves her wife. I'm not doubting that she did probably love her wife. But then she talks about credit card bills that her wife ran up on her car, or issues that they had in being left in the dishwasher, or in the laundry machine, or dishes left in the sink. So you're going to hear all this. What you're also going to hear is the detective asked the defendant multiple times, was there a fight? Was there an argument? Repeatedly denies that there was any fight. And I quote, nobody was pissed, is what she says. So officers were trying to figure out what was going on. She said this was a normal morning. They were gossiping about girl things, women things, went to 7-Eleven. There was no fight. That's what the defendant says happened. She says it was an accident, but then in the same statement, admits, I went to Lowe's. I bought the shovels. I bought the shovels for the purpose of digging a hole in the backyard. You're going to see the security surveillance with the defendant walking through the woods, paying for stuff that she bought, the tarps, the towels, the shovels. She also called her mom and dad repeatedly. She talks about that in the state. Never once did she call 911. Her wife is laying there, bleeding, just shot her, says it's by accident. Never once called 911. It was hours later that finally the police were informed of this shooting. The defendant also admitted that she contemplated leaving altogether. She even put together a little bag that you're going to see that the officers found in the car. You're going to hear from Burlington County Medical Examiner, Dr. Ian Hood, who's going to talk about the death of Felicia and what caused her death. He's also going to talk about the distance, how far away Felicia and Laura, Laura were when she was shot. He's going to talk about the angle of the bullets, completely refuting any idea that this was an accident. It was 18 to 22 inches from her face when she was shot. You're also going to hear from somebody who works for Springfield, who's a Springfield nut. Been there for 30 years, old patents. He's in design and manufacturing. He's going to tell you, this gun does not go off by accident. It was sent to them in Springfield to do the test. And he's going to tell you, there's multiple safeties on that gun. There's a grip safety, and there's a trigger safety. That gun does not go off unless you point it and you engage all of those safeties. Now, at the end of the trial, I'm going to have an opportunity to speak to you again. But by that point, you're going to see all the evidence and your common sense, and what you know about relationships and life, point to one thing. No arguments that day. This wasn't an accident. The defendant intentionally shot and murdered.